10.30 Eastern Time. Welcome back. Checking our top stories now. The Space Shuttle Enterprise is a couple of minutes south of JFK. These are shots from earlier. Um, when it hits New York City, it's going to fly by several landmarks there first. And you see it's riding on top that 747. The shuttle will eventually be moved into its new home at a museum there on the Hudson River. Space Shuttle uh, actually scheduled a touchdown at New York's JFK, which is where we find Jason Carroll. So let's head out there. Good morning, Jason. And good morning to you, Carol. Uh, as we've been standing here way off in the distance, I'm not sure my photographer, Ricky, can catch it for us. Ricky, you're going to give it a go and try? I don't know if you can make that out, but that's it. That's the space shuttle way out there. That's what we're being told, making a pass. Of course, it'll get a lot closer between now and just a few minutes when it's expected to land here at JFK. Lots of excitement here, as you can imagine. Hundreds of invited guests standing by and waiting uh, to see the shuttle land. Also, folks such as Leonard Nimoy, uh, Spock from uh, the Enterprise will be here. But also, we've got the real deal. We've got Major General Joe Engel. He was one of the first pilots of the Enterprise. This has got to be an incredibly exciting day for you as we're now just minutes away from seeing the Enterprise land here right now. It really is, Jason. Thank you for letting me be here. Thank you for having me on with the show with you today. Now, I know we were talking a little earlier. I know you are from Houston, and I know some folks there in Houston were disappointed their city was not chosen to have a shuttle, but as you were saying, there simply aren't enough shuttles to go around. That's very true. There, there are so many places that wanted to have a shuttle on display, wanted to have it part of their educational programs and their museums for children. Just a shame there weren't more of them to go around, but I think you all are very fortunate, and I know you'll do a wonderful job. You know, as, we, you know, as we're now once again just minutes away from seeing the shuttle landing, it'll get a lot closer to now in a few minutes. Tell us what it's like being up there and flying an aircraft like a space shuttle. <laughs> it's, it's a wonderful feeling. It's a very gratifying feeling for someone who's, who's devoted their career to, to test flying like myself and all of the other astronauts have done. Uh, to get to do, to get a flight in a space, in a space shuttle uh, is it, just the culmination of your entire professional career. We're going to try and get some more shots of that shuttle. Ricky, I know you're trying to do your best, but it's still a little bit far away as we try to get some shots of it. But what do you think is going through the pilots' minds right now who are on board? The pilots of the shuttle, of, of the carrier aircraft, you mean? Correct. Well, they're very busy in, in the cockpit right now. In fact, we talked with them down at uh, in Washington, D.C. when they brought uh, dis <clears throat> when they uh, brought Discovery up from uh, Cape Kennedy mm -hmm. and uh, and loaded Enterprise up to come up here. And uh, I know the pilots very well. I know the crew members, and they said they're just very, very busy in the cockpit. They had no idea how excited it was how exciting it was for the people on the ground until they got on the ground and watched the news and so much has been said about the future of space travel because when you think about it for the past three decades nasa has really been defined by the shuttles and now they're no more they're all going into museums so how do you think nasa will be defined in the future by the programs that nasa is involved in now and will be involved in the future the space the international space station is is a is our big focus right now uh, continuing the research and, and the development and the, and the testing that's going on in the station is going to make it possible for us to make the long duration flights beyond low Earth orbit to Mars to the other destinations that we will be going to. We're developing the capability on board the International Space Station right now. So hopefully the interest in space will still be there. And Carol, just a few minutes ago, uh, before you came to us, uh, we were standing here watching the little kids who were dressed up in the, in the little blue NASA uniforms. And you said, Jason, you should be getting a shot of them. That's really going to be the future of travel. That was an inspirational moment as well, wasn't it? It really was. That is our future. Those the young the young boys and girls, young men and women uh, who are who are beginning to get their interest, develop their interest, not just in aviation, not just in phone going into space, but in science and math. Uh, they're getting they're getting motivated right now. And that's so terribly important. Well hopefully the motivation continues, the inspiration continues as well. Want to thank you once again for being with us. What a pleasure. Thank you so very much. Once again, Major General Joe Engel, one of the first original pilots of the Enterprise, as we're now just a few minutes away from seeing the Enterprise land here at JFK. Carol? Oh, it's such a beautiful, it's such a beautiful sight, Jason. We could probably see this better than you because our cameras can get closer than your line of sight, so we're feeling really lucky right now. Uh, Enterprise?
space pioneer. So is Eileen Collins, the first woman to command a space shuttle. She's on the phone with us right now. Eileen, I, w I was just thinking about getting young people excited in the space program and excited about becoming an astronaut. You know, you remember John Glenn was such a hero. He was a star. We, we don't have those kinds of figures so much anymore. Well, I think that we will again. Um, you saw earlier today, or at least you talked about the power of a write-in campaign where the Constitution's name was changed to Enterprise because of the number of people that, you know, the Trekkies and, and many others that wrote in. If we write our congressmen and congresswomen, if we write the president in the White House, don't write to NASA because we already get tons of letters and we totally agree with you. But if you write to our elected leaders and say, this is important to the future of our country, to our leadership, to exploration, to make keeping our country great, having a strong space program. So I would challenge the American citizens to write in and tell your lawmakers you want to have a strong space program. Uh, NASA's working on it, but it really helps to have the, the funding and the help of the American uh, citizens behind us. Yeah, we're... It's not the greatest economy right now, so I think many, many Americans probably understand why we're on stand down as far as the space program goes nowadays. But you do mention that, um, you know, we need to get young people more excited about a space program, and that means getting them more excited in math and science. And maybe if they could believe they could become an astronaut and, and explore space, maybe that would renew the interest in this country in the subjects of math and science. Yeah, you are exactly right, and that's exactly what it does. The space program, you know, I look at when I was um, in fourth grade, when I first decided I wanted to be an astronaut, I was reading about the Gemini astronauts, and I wanted to be one of them. And young people today, well, we do have a space station. We do have astronauts that go to our space station. Now they are being launched by uh, the Russian Soyuz. Someday, we hope, we're saying now maybe 2016, 2017, we'll be launching our own astronauts again. But it's very, very important to have United States astronauts launching for our country because our young people see this and they say, hey, I want to do that someday. And I know I need to be good in math. I need to be good in science. I need to study technical fields because that way, not only could I, I fly, but you could also work in mission control, be an engineer. You can help design these new spacecraft. So um, I agree with you 100%, and I, I think our teachers across the country are doing a pretty good job uh, integrating space into the math and science curriculum, and they need to keep doing that. When you saw those little kids waiting at JFK, you know, they were dressed in their space suits, and they're, they're excitedly waiting the shuttle to come into view. What goes through your mind? Oh, I love it. it. You know, actually, they motivate me. When I see young people, and, and I still go out and talk at schools, I think it's important for astronauts to do that because I get a lot out of that myself, and it, it energizes me, and it makes me want to go back out and talk up the program, the things that I've done. So uh, I think it's really neat and good for the kids. Uh, we talked a little bit about this before, about how NASA has orchestrated all of this, these flyovers of major cities, past American landmarks, you know. It's sort of like this orchestrated public relations campaign. Is it effective in your mind? Well, I, I'm not sure what you're asking there, but I think that... You know, NASA does a pretty good job of public relations. NASA has a very limited budget, so we, you know, reach out to the, you know, private media, um, for example, CNN, to help us with the coverage. You're doing a great job this morning. I've been watching it um, from before the time that Enterprise took off out of Washington. I think you're all doing a great job, and keep it up. I would say, you know, getting, um, you know, just t take a look at the activities that are taking place on the International Space Station. I would say... Most Americans don't know what's going on up there, but there is quite a bit of research on the human body, developing new technologies. These are the things that our astronauts are doing to help, help us have a better future, whether it's in health or technology or, you know, exploration in general. Mm -hmm. And it, it's pretty exciting, and even those things can, can inspire young people. Yeah, and, and Eileen, stand by. And, of course, we're bringing these pictures not to help NASA so much, but because it's part of our American history. And people are really intrigued by this. You can see all the people standing on the ground watching for this thing to pass over. We're going to continue our coverage after a short break.